Hey challengers, today we're gonna to be talking about the major muscles of the body. Really we're looking at 11 muscles or muscle groups that are some of the biggest movers of our body. So let's get started. Starting in the front here, you can see we have a diagram of the human body uh, without any skin. So you're able to see the muscles fairly well. The first muscle we're looking at is here, the deltoid or the shoulder muscle, right? It's involved in raising and lowering of the arm, uh, moving the arm forward, backward, and out to the side. It also stabilizes the shoulder joint. So certain exercises that we might do that would require uh, activating the deltoid would be a push-up, uh, a burpee, holding a plank position is going to stabilize the, the deltoid is going to help stabilize the shoulder uh, and the shoulder joint. Our next one is the pectoralis or the pec. It's that large muscle on the front of the chest on the upper part of the chest. What does it do? Well, it helps move the arm across the body. So if we look at this arm here, and if the arm was gonna come across the body, this muscle, the pectoralis, is going to contract and pull it across. It's also gonna rotate the, the arm internally. So it's gonna rotate towards, uh, towards the body. It also provides a pushing force away from the body. So whether we are pushing downward or pushing out, okay, and somewhat upwards, the pectoralis is going to be active. It's going to contract to, um, to help us do that. Simple exercises where this comes into play. Again, we're talking about a push-up, the burpee, holding a plank. If you need to, say, push a car, right? Uh, that's stalled, you'd be using the, the pectoralis muscles. All right, moving down. Next one up is the biceps. Biceps on the front of the upper arm. What does it do? It flexes the elbow joint, right? It causes, when this contracts, it causes the hand to come up towards the, come closer to the body towards the shoulder, right? and it also rotates the forearm. The bicep is used when we're doing any type of pulling motion, so pulling towards ourselves, either from above or in front or below. Right? You can think of a bicep curl, um, uh, lifting a water bottle up to your mouth to drink, that requires using the biceps. All right, next up, the abdominal muscles. Really, there are four different abdominal muscles here, but we're going to just refer to them, uh, or think of them as one group of muscles right now. What are these used for? Why are they important? Well, they provide support for the spine, okay? And this, this trunk section of the upper body. They also assist in breathing and they allow the body to uh, flex forward, right? We have to use these muscles here, but really their, their major purpose is stabilization here of the midsection and the spine. Where do we use those abdominal muscles? All the time. You, they are working when you are just standing still if we do a mountain climber, these are working a lot. Um, holding a plank, holding steady, doing a burpee, doing a sit-up. Almost any exercise that we do uh, will involve some type of work by the abdominal muscles. All right, our last one for the front of the body is our quadricep muscle excuse me, quadricep muscles. 
There are four muscles here, but again, we're just going to refer to them as a group, the quad, uh, the quads. And what they do is they extend the leg at the at the knee joint. So a great example of this is kicking a soccer ball. So as that foot comes forward to kick the ball, the quadricep is contracting uh, very rapidly to kick the ball hard. All right, let's check out the back side of the body. First muscle group or muscle we're looking at here is the trapezius, also known as the trap. You can see there's this diamond-like shape. That's our trapezius. Okay. It's a large muscle uh, between the shoulders and the neck, and it's used when lifting your arms or an object overhead, or when lifting the shoulders up like you're shrugging your shoulders towards your ears. So anytime you're carrying something down low, uh, if you have a bag of groceries in one or both hands, you're going to be using these trapezius muscles to help uh, hold those steady. Something to keep in mind, these start to get very tight and very tired when you are in front of a computer or you are on your uh, cell phone device for an extended period of time. As our heads start to tip forward, these muscles have to really work overtime to keep that head in a good position. So make sure that you're getting away from your screen at least every half hour uh, just to give your, your trapezius muscles and neck muscles a rest. All right, moving on. Next up. What do we got here? The triceps. The triceps are the muscles on the back of the upper arm, and they are the antagonist of the bicep muscles, meaning that they work in conjunction against the bicep. So when the bicep contracts, the tricep will lengthen, and vice versa. When the tricep muscles contract, the bicep muscles lengthen. Now, what, does, what do these muscles do? They are extending the arm at the elbow joint. So when this hand is coming away from the body, we're using that tricep. So this is the pushing part of a push-up, or as you extend that arm, uh, extend the elbow, up overhead, you're pushing away with the tricep. Also, if you're doing a dip, if you lower yourself down and push back up, uh, for those of you that were in class when we were in the pool and we were doing dips on the side of the pool, that pushing up to get out of the pool, we were using our tricep muscles. All right, next up, our latissimus dorsi, or our lat. This muscle right here, this big muscle, it starts up under the armpit and wraps its way around the back to the spine. You can see how large it is right there. And what does it do? It's used in all pulling movements. When we're pulling, bringing our, our hands in towards the body, um, whether it's both arms or a single arm from the side, from in front or overhead, or even behind. Uh, we're using the latissimus dorsi. It's a main mover there, very important. So certain exercises, uh, a pull-up uses the, the lat. Um, again, like you said, if you are picking something up off the ground um, and after you've activated the legs you are and you're bringing the load towards your chest you're going to be using the uh, the lats there all right moving our way down the gluteus maximus or the glute right this is the the larger of the butt muscles 
and it's the one that we're going to talk about here. It, what this does is it extends the leg at the hip. So basically, so you can stand up tall. Our example would be rising from the bottom of a squat or the bottom of the lunge. These muscles are, should be uh, very active in that process of helping us stand back up. All right, we're also using it when we're walking, running, jumping, but really it's to get us standing up tall. Our hamstring, the back of the upper thigh. Again, it's the antagonist of the quadricep muscles. So when the hamstring contracts, the quadricep muscle is going to lengthen and vice versa. So where is this important? Hamstring is super important as far as running, jumping, walking, those type of movements. All right, if you look at a sprinter, you will see they have very well developed uh, hamstring muscles. Uh, they're super important in uh, running and running quickly. Our last one, the gastrocnemius is the larger muscle of the calf. And what are we talking about here? You can feel this one when you're, when you're walking, when you're running, jumping, um, as your foot is pushing away from the ground. So as your toes are on the ground and you are pushing away, you'll feel the gastrocnemius contract. So again, if we talk about uh, being powerful, being a powerful uh, athlete or just an individual, the backside here, the hamstrings and the gastrocnemius are very important as far as um, speed and power and are often neglected when people are training. All right, those are our 11 major muscle groups that we took a look at today. There is an assessment in Schoology. So you can, after you finish this, you can take a look at that. But our conditioning for today, called death by push-ups. You guys have done this before. You have 60 seconds for each round. And you will keep going until you're unable to complete a full round of push-ups in the minute. So for example, it starts out very, very easy in the beginning and then progressively gets more challenging. Minute one, you're gonna do one push-up. However much time you have left in that minute is your rest, right? That first one's only gonna take you a few seconds. So you'll have the bulk of the minute to rest. Minute two, you're gonna do two push-ups. Minute three, three push-ups. Minute four, four push-ups, so on and so forth. All right, you're gonna get up to minute 12. At this point, some of you are gonna be challenged to complete that in the 60 seconds, All right? Others of you guys are gonna get closer to 20, maybe 25. But as you go along, the fatigue will start to set in. Uh, your muscular endurance will, you'll find out how, what type of muscular endurance you have and the strength that you have to continue. All right, so again, we'll post the assessment in Schoology. Make sure you, uh, you do that. If you have questions, uh, you can message us through Schoology or drop into the Zoom office hours. Have a great day and enjoy your push-ups.